All right, folks. Um, I think I'm going to do one more video um, for this week. Um, what I want to do is I want to select a few of the problems from this assignment right here, the um, homework from yesterday, the homework from Wednesday, that was titled Distance, Velocity, and Acceleration Practice. Because um, <clears throat> I do think that even though I gave some sort of worked out solutions, um, sometimes it's better to hear somebody talk through what's going on as an additional way of, of trying to understand. And so I'm not going to do all of them. Um, I'm going to, I think I've got three of them in, in mind that I want to do. One that I think is kind of an easier one. Um, and then one that is maybe a little less easy. And then one that I think is pretty hard. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do number one, number three, and number five. Okay. So let's talk about those right here. Right. Um, yeah. So let's start with number one. Number one says, um, you got a, a ball that is released from rest. It rolls down the ramp with a constant acceleration. What is the velocity? Okay, okay, let's see. So, number one. Okay. Ball has a constant acceleration, um, and it starts from rest. So here's time and here's velocity. I'm always going to start in these situations with making a table to help visualize what's happening. Um, yeah, so at zero, it's zero. At one, it's 0.25 meters per second. At two, it's 0.5 meters per second, because basically, every second it increases by 0.25. Okay, so I could continue with this table, or what am I trying to get after six seconds? Um, what's the kind of formula that I'm using here? What's the kind of shortcut that I could use? Well, I could say that the change in velocity is gonna be equal to um, time times acceleration, right? The, the amount that the velocity changes, so this triangle is um, is delta, right? That symbol means how much does something changing, um, is just time times acceleration. So if I plug that in, 6 times 0.25 is um, 1.5. So at 6 seconds, the ball is going 1.5 meters per second, okay? You could do that by making a table and going all the way down step by step, or you could use this formula here, okay? Um, part B of this, how long does it take for the ball to reach a velocity of 3 meters per second? Well, um, we could use this same formula. This is part A. Part B, how long does it take? Well, if we want it to go from 0 to 3, the delta V is 3 meters per second, right? Um, the, the acceleration is 0.25 meters per second per second. And um, we're trying to get the time. So if I plug these into this, we've got 3 equals 0.25 times t. Um, divide this out and you get 12, I think. t equals 12 seconds, right? OK. So that's what's going on there. Now, the last one, how far will the ball travel after 10 seconds? Well, this is a situation where I'm going to make a graph. Anytime I see a question that is asking how far, I'm, I'm thinking, what is the what does the velocity graph look like? Um, well, here's what it looks like. V, T, it's constantly accelerating. And at 10 seconds, right, the, the triangular velocity graph is going to look something like that. Hopefully you can see it. Um, what do I need to know? I, I know the base of this is 10 because it goes from 0 to 10. I need to know the height of this. And the height of this particular graph is the amount that the, um, the velocity changes in 10 seconds. How much does the velocity change in 10 seconds? Well, delta V is acceleration times time. 10 times um, 0.25 is 2.5, right? So there we go. Now. The total distance is going to be the area of that triangle. A equals one half times base times height. And you just crunch those numbers to get the distance traveled in 10 seconds. Um, 10 times 2.5 is 25. Half of 25 is 12.5 meters, right? And there you have it. That's, that's um, what's happening in number one. Let me move on to number um, 
Actually, let's talk about number three. And that might be the only one. We'll see how long this goes. But number three, I think number three is probably one of the hardest, if not the hardest, one on this, um, in this assignment. Um, and so if you had trouble with it, like, that makes sense. This is, a, I think, a tricky one. So it says, we have an object with an initial position of negative 20. So it's kind of starting to the left of zero. Um, it's moving with an initial velocity of two meters per second. So it's, it's moving to the right, um, and it's speeding up. Its constant acceleration is three meters per second per second. When is it gonna get to a position of 10 meters? Okay, so there's a lot to think about here. But I think where I'm gonna begin is how far is it that this thing needs to move and which way does it need to move to get from where it starts to where it ends? Well, if it starts at, negative 20, position of negative 20 meters, and we want it to end at positive 10 meters, well, what that means is it has to be a total displacement. It has to be 30 meters, right? So whatever this graph looks like, whatever the shape of this graph looks like, the area of that shape needs to be equal to positive 30. Uh, so let's Let's next then think about what is that shape? What is the shape of this graph? Well, I can put it together by using the information that's given, velocity time, okay? Um, it starts with a velocity of positive two. So that's the first point on the graph, zero, two, okay? Um, it accelerates at a rate of three meters per second. And here's the thing is we don't know how long it accelerates for. All I know is it kind of constantly speeds up until eventually it gets to that place where the area of that shape, the total distance traveled, ends up being exactly what we want, which is 30. Okay? So what else do we know about this thing? So here's, when I see this shape, right, the name of this shape, that this shape is a um, trapezoid. It's got two parallel sides. Um, but rather than deal with a trapezoid, anytime I have a situation like this is when uh, I'm going to break it up. I'm going to divide it up into two simpler shapes, namely a triangle and a rectangle. And then I'm going to kind of think about each one of those shapes, um, like one at a time. Um, the easier one to think of is the rectangle. When the area of a rectangle is base times height, um, the length of the base here, we don't know. We don't know how much time it's going to take to get... To, to get it to move the distance it's supposed to move. We do know the height, the velocity is, is two, so the area of that rectangular portion of the graph is two x, okay? What about the triangle? Now the triangle's a little bit trickier, um, but if we think about what's going on here, it starts at a velocity of two, and every second it's going three meters per second faster. So if it accelerated for one second, it would be going three seconds faster. If it accelerated for two seconds, you'd be going six meters per second faster, et cetera, et cetera. Problem is we don't know how long it's going, but remember, delta V equals acceleration times time, and we know the acceleration. Our delta V here is equal to acceleration times the unknown amount of time, which is x. So the height of this triangle is 3x. That's the change in velocity. The base is still this unknown time, so the base is, is x, and the area of this triangle, a, well, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, 1 half times um, the base is x, and the height is 3x. a equals 1 half x times 3x. Okay, so now I've got an expression for for everything I need, um, I'm going to simplify it and put it into an equation. Um, the total area is this plus this, so I've got 2x plus um, 1 half times 3x squared, which, okay, and this is the total area, so that's what we want to be equal to 30. 30 equals, um, let's see, 1 half times 3 is 1.5x squared plus 2x. And this is the equation that you need to solve, right? That's the equation you need to solve 
to, to figure out this unknown time. Now, I think I'm going to stop here because um, from this point on, it's solving a quadratic, okay? And if you need um, a refresher on how to solve a quadratic, that's cool. You can, you, you know, I'm willing to talk about that, but um, maybe hit me up in office hours for that, um, and we can discuss some ways that you can solve an equation like that. But, um, yeah, that's it for number, that's it for number three, okay? I think I can, I think I can fit number five into this without going too long. So let's do number five. Okay, so number five, um, we said a boat has an acceleration of 0.25 meters per second squared. The boat travels 80 meters in 20 seconds while accelerating. What was its initial velocity? Interesting. So, um, let's see, where do we start here? We'll start with the graph this time. Okay, velocity, time, and what's happening, right? So the, the boat is moving, the boat is moving. Um, we don't know how fast the boat is moving to begin with. So that's our unknown. Um, so, and I don't know where it is. I don't know if it's positive. I don't know if it's negative. I don't know if it's zero. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna put it anywhere, okay? The other thing we know is that it's, it's accelerating. And then eventually, after how long? After 20 seconds, it has traveled a total distance of 80 meters. So let's just say this right here, that's 20 seconds, the time that it takes to go from here to here. It's another one of those trapezoids, so I'm going to divide it up into a triangle and a rectangle. Um, down here, I've got the rectangular region. The area is... Um, base times height, which is 20x. We don't know the initial velocity there, so we're just calling it that. Um, and the height of this triangle, right, the amount of velocity, uh, the amount that the, the velocity increases is delta v equals a times t, which is 20 times 0.25, which is eight meters per second. So wherever it was that the boat started in terms of its velocity, after 20 seconds, it's going eight meters per second faster. The area of this triangle is one half 20 times eight. I know the base and I actually know the height this time, okay? All right, so to finish this, I know that the total distance is 80 and the areas of these regions are 20x and uh, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna multiply this out Half of 20 is 10, 10 times 8 is, um, is um, 80, right? Is that right? What's going on here? I feel like something's wrong. Oh, no. 20 times 0.25 is an 8. Shoot. You probably were looking at me saying, Mr. Tuttle, what are you doing? 20 times 0.25 is actually 5, right? Oh, hey, Cody. Hold on a second. Let me get Cody. Hey, Bugs. Are you scared of the thunder? Come here. Can I pick you up? Good boy. Come here. I got you. All right. I'm going to finish this with Cody. My sidekick, folks. This is Cody. Say hi. All right. So, you want to get down? Okay. All right. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So I caught that mistake, 20 times 0.5 is actually 5, so this here is actually this. 20 times 5 is 100 and half of 100 is 50. Phew, that was a close one. Um, solve this for x and you've got your initial velocity. Mm, I think you end up with x equals 1.5 meters per second. Great, and that's it. Okay, hopefully that's helpful. If it's not, you know what to do. Hit me up in Ops Hours. Um, all right, enjoy the day.